When I was a kid, uh, my father was, he left the church. So he married my, my mother, and then in a few months, he, he, he was not going to church anymore. But he was pushing for education. So if I, if I can tell you what I got from my father was that um, he, he wanted what he didn't have. So both my father and my mother, they had three years of education, just the elementary, and learn how to read. And that's it. But he didn't want that for their kids. So it was me and my, and my brother, and they pushed for that. My father also was, uh, was good with, um, with nature, and he introduced me to nature, and I uh, appreciated that. Uh, every year, I spend one month with my grandfather in a farm where there was no electricity, no water, no showers, no sewage, no bathrooms. So we have to go in a small house outside. Some of you might understand that. <laughs> and, I, and I came from Brazil. I'm not that old because this happened in the United States 150 years ago. I, in Brazil, it was not that long that we had that situation. And then I spent, uh, I calculated the years that I went. Every year I spent this one month. And one month of, one year of my young life was spent in nature. So even though we didn't have these, but we have a river, we have birds, we have trees, we have fruits, we have uh, forests to explore, we have mountains to climb, we have animals to understand, to see, to play with. And um, we didn't have cars. The only car that we had was a chariot that was not even pulled by horses, was two oxen. That was terrible, but <laughs> it took us two hours to go to the city that uh, in a car will take, what, five minutes. <laughs> but this uh, taught me a good lesson on life. Another thing that I got from my father is work, no matter what. No matter what you have to do, you have to work. And then uh, I started work with him uh, with nine years old. And, and I always enjoy to, to do whatever work they, pe people put in my hands or, or God put in my hands. But my father was missing one point. He was not in church. And there is when my mother came. And she, every single Sabbath, she brought me to church. And she kept, kept me and my brother in church all the time. And that's what I'm talking about, education and church together. This made the impression in my life. And then um, both my son and myself, uh, we became uh, doctors. Uh, we uh, work as a missionary doctors in Brazil. We had the system, the old system, missionary system in, in Brazil, in the, in the country and work exclusively for the church. We have five Adventist hostels in, in, in Sao Paulo. Uh, I was working in Sao Paulo, but in, in the whole country. And then uh, I, I was working there, and I worked there for 14 years before coming to America. My father was uh, four years younger than my mother. And people would say, hey, yeah, would say to him, hey, <laughs> When you guys become old, you are going to be married to an old lady. <laughs> so what happened? Because of his lifestyle, because he left the church. He died with diabetes because he was used to smoke, to drink, to eat pork. To, he was obese. He was not doing exercise and a lot. He was a good father. I'm not complaining. But, uh, but uh, he, when he was 65, he had a heart attack and died. And my mother, the old lady, <laughs> lived to be 97. Just 30 years of difference, OK? <laughs> but lifestyle, uh, and this impressed me a lot. Lifestyle is something important uh, in life. Lifestyle is important for, for the service to God, too. Um, education and church. 
because of this combination of education, my mother also was someone that was pushing for us to go to school and, and help us to do so. And then uh, we became uh, doctors and then uh, both from my family and my brother family, we have um, one physician, two dentists, I mean our children, one nurse practitioner and one filmmaker. And then in our extended family, we have, I mean, our children married to some, some other people, one physical therapy, another physician, and one speech pathologist. Just with my family, close family, we could open a hospital <laughs> <laughs> or a clinic or something like that. Um, we must go together with, uh, with church and education. I was talking to my granddaughter. I have a granddaughter. Uh, I should not go bad, a little far from here, but uh, uh, there is something here. I cannot see these guys here, and I have to see the, the graduates. Congratulations. But I was talking to my daughter, and then I asked her um, what she want to do when... Uh, uh, I was joking, okay. <laughs> what do what you want to do when you grow up? And she was 10 years old, and she said, I want to be a veterinarian. <laughs> and then I said, because she loved dogs, she, do she loved animals. And, and then she asked me on her, on her turn, what do you, why did you become a doctor? Well, uh, I was not ready for that. But then I, I started saying, well, when I was a kid, I want to be a truck driver first. Because my father was a truck driver, and I loved to to. to to, to drive tr trucks and drive cars, and I, I until now, I, if I, if I have, uh, uh, if someone is traveling with me, they know that I will not leave easy the wheel for them. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and that's, and that's what uh, I want to be. Then I become uh, in, in love with nature. I want to be a farmer. Then I went to school and I start studying animals and. Uh, the anatomy of the insects and the animals and nature and plants, and then I want to be a biologist. And then my father, um, even though he was not Adventist, he, he did one thing very interesting. He bought all the books that um, Ellen White had. Today you can buy this in a CD, <laughs> yeah, or even not, without a CD, you just go, go online. And we don't need even to buy those things eh, because they are online. But he bought all of these books, and then here is one, Health and Happiness, or the former Ministry of Healing. And then I got the five books that I talk about health, and I read them all. The health message in Brazil um, came um, maybe in the beginning of the 20th century, 1900s, early 1900s. And, uh, but uh, only the health message was don't eat pork, don't drink, don't smoke, period. The first Adventist pastors, the, the first Adventist pastor in Brazil was um, um, Jose Amador dos Reis, that was um, a cousin of my grand. Uh, my grandfather, and uh, he died with 36 years old with um, consumption. Anybody know what consumption is? Tuberculosis, yeah, see? Yeah, some people here are very smart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Or I would not say very old because this name is very old, but uh, in any case, uh, why did, did he die? He was a very good missionary. He traveled around the country preaching Jesus Christ, but he didn't have time for, he didn't have time for rest. He didn't have time uh, for, for his family. He didn't have uh, a good lifestyle. He was not eating pork, but eating a lot of other um, types of foods that are not that healthy. And he was not taking care much of himself. Um, and that's why, and that's what he, he had a short life. You see, lifestyle is important not only for, for life, but um, for being used by God. Yeah, you can be used by God for many years if you have 
uh, a life with, uh, without diseases. But anyways, I read these books, uh, one of the, I mean, the five books, uh, I'm not sure uh, because I read them in Portuguese, but I believe the, the one is Temperance, uh, Consulus on Diet, Consulus on Diets and, sorry, Consulus on Health, Consulus on Diet and Foods, um, Happy uh, or Health and Happiness, and then our Minister of Healing and Medical Ministry. Uh, I might be uh, missing some of them, but I, I read those five books and then they were inspired and then I decided, okay, I'm gonna work in the field of helping others and then, um, and, and then I'm gonna be a doctor. And then my granddaughter looked at me and then she said, um, I think I'm gonna be a missionary in Africa. I said, okay. <laughs> it's a big change, but... Uh, <laughs> But um, my, my point is not that not, not everybody needs to be a doctor or a nurse or, or working in the, in the field of the, the health care. But um, we can be missionaries for God wherever, whatever we do. Uh, being a veterinarian, being an engineer, being a lawyer, being whatever. God can use us wherever we are Amen. to to progress his work and to promote the second coming of Jesus Christ. But education and education and church must go together. We need to have this connection. And I that's what I brought this book here. Um, I'm gonna read in the book if you wanna check this the name of this book is uh, uh, Library of Health and it was written in 1925. And then I just got a chapter here on diabetes. And then I will read one paragraph on the treatment of diabetes on that time. This was before the era of the antibiotics. So on that time, medicine was very weird. The most positive influence in diminishing the disease belongs to opium or codeine. Oh, no. oh my goodness. <laughs> that was really, really messed up, com considering the situation that we have today. Oh, man. But this does not appear to interfere with uh, the progress of the disease. Oh. The best treatment was codeine, but it does not help. <laughs> That's what they are saying here. The alkalics, pepsin, iron, quinine, salicylate of sodium, alum, iodine, nitric acid, turpentine, and inhalation of oxygen have all been employed. All wrong. Huh? There is no such one thing here that could help diabetics, for sure. Um, the Exciting causes of diabetes appear to be exposure to cold and wet. <laughs> Drinking cold water largely when heated. I, I am still thinking about that. What they mean by that? Uh, cold water largely when it is heated, so you can. <laughs> but that's, that's the science of then, and that's the science that uh, without without God, does not go anywhere. Um, and, and this is from 1900s. I have books that I use in my courses that are few years ago and already are outdated. Few years, four years, I have to, up, to update it. There, I, I teach one course in addiction and already updated the book five times in the last 10 years. So you, just to see. There is a saying that when they publish a book today in the medical field, this book is already outdated. <laughs> because it takes three years for the book to be published. And when they publish, the guys are doing in the science in the lab, they are doing other experiments and proving different things <laughs> that didn't have time to be in the book. So that's our science. Um, this is the situation that we have together. We have to put science and 
church together. What happened to science alone? I went to visit the San Bernardino uh, Museum of uh, Science, Museum of Science. I mean, how many of you have been there? Close to um, Walmart, uh, in the 10th freeway, instead of going to Walmart, going in Redlands, you go left and there is this museum. You've never been there? <laughs> You've been there, huh? So it's a cool place, but it's full of evolution. And then I was seeing this picture of a, of a big uh, fish that they found in the Mojave Desert. And then they were saying that um, this fish was found there as a fossil because uh, in the past, the ocean was going on that, uh, on that level. And then there was a plate disleveled and then the ocean went down and the fish died there in the Mojave Desert, 4,000 feet up. And I was thinking, boy, that's a hard to, 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 I mean, the place should move 4,000 feet. Well, a, a change of that would break the, the, the earth. Yeah, this is, a, wow, how come this happened like that? And then I was thinking, much easier would be to accept that there was a flood. <laughs> and this fish was trapped on the upper part when the waters came down. Easy to understand, very much more uh, possible than, than a plate changed. So I was thinking about that. What is, um, what is that, uh, other things that the science alone cannot prove. When I was a kid, I was uh, in the school, and then uh, my biology teacher in high school, she asked, how many of you believe in evolution? And about 70% of the class stood up. And I stayed sitting with a few other colleagues that were not even Adventists, but they were Christians. And then she said, this is not a matter of religion. This is science. And then she sp spoke a little more, and then I will ask again, how many of you believe in evolution? Now 80% of them stood up, and we stay sitting down. And then, uh, and then she said, okay, but um, you guys, uh, if you want to be scientists, you have to believe in evolution. And that's the thing. They will like to believe in evolution. They need to believe in evolution. Most of the things that my teacher talked on that time were lies. They found the missing link. I have chimp and I have men. And then for years they were teaching that and then they figured out that was a fake. They found another missing link between a cow and a whale. The guys just put the two bones together and they talked that for years in high school and, and kids were learning that and was fake also. And this has been repeated over and over and over. By the way, you know what missing link is? Is when you have one um, species that is have that species and have another species is in transition Evolution preached this, this evolution that uh, species will transform themselves and became another, and that's what we became human beings. And they go with these principles of transition all over. Guess what? They cannot prove that. There is no one single missing link between a, a rat and a frog, or between a frog and a, and a lizard or between a frog and a, and, a, and a ship. And of course, between, between a chimp and, and human beings. So if we believe in evolution, wouldn't that be something that if we believe in this transition and this change, that we should find thousands of those missing links? Isn't that uh, something that uh, um, a bright man will think, hey, if we believe in this changing, changing, change, we should have proofs. 
over and over and over and over, and we have nothing. <laughs> this, this, is, this is what science, without, without the Lord. If you are not convinced yet, well, I'm not here to convince you, but uh, I am convinced. But uh, scientists believe that um, uh, the complexity of one cell, just one cell, you have heard about that, is the same structure complexity of a Boeing plane 737. Same complexity. And then they ask, what are the chances that this big plane 74, 737 would come out by itself? And then they said, well, um, very minimal, but uh, it's not impossible. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> How can they, and, and they say, well, but uh, this process will take billions of years. And then all of this starts with, uh, with an explosion. Another thing that I can't understand. An explosion does not put things together. There is, uh, we know explosion, boom. Separate things, put things apart, and they think that an explosion starts everything. Come on, come with another one because that one. And then the chances that um, a Boeing 737 will come by chance, as a cell will come by chance, is one point, uh, uh, one elevated in a, in a 40,000 uh, sequence, whatever they call. That means almost impossible. And that means that um, evolution is a religion. What? You have to have what? Faith. faith? <laughs> and maybe more faith than in, in the things of the Lord, because we have evidence every day in our lives, in the lives of our brethren, about uh, the power of God. Yeah? We are studying this week the power of God, and we see this power everywhere, we see that God can do those things. Let's move to the health science uh, um, work, because that's my area. Um, for many years, people are believing that smoking and drinking is, um, is good for health. And still today, um, there is someone that are, um, there is some scientists still defending alcohol. Smoking, about 50 to 60 years ago, the World Health Organization recognized that smoking is bad, like that smoking can cause cancer, and then they figured it out, they're accepting. At least in our country, we are okay with that, even though in many other countries, they are still having trouble with a, a lot of smoking, and uh, it's still smoking is the main cause of death in the world. It's the main cause of heart disease and cancer. Those two are the big killers in our, in our world. Just heart disease kills 17 million people per year. Can you believe that? 17 million people dying every year for a disease that if they have stopped the smoking, controlled their weight and controlled their diet, they could not die. So it's completely, almost entirely preventable. But our church has been very strict on that. We don't need to, to smoke. We don't need to drink. This is not good for, for our health. By the way, one time I, I was in Loma Linda when I was a student. This was in 1992, 1993. And then we have this Dr. Uh, Winder that came from from uh, New York to present an issue about smoking. Dr. Weiner was the first, uh, one of the first researchers in the United States to prove that smoking caused lung cancer. And this was back in 1950s. And um, he had some patients um, that were with, diagnosed with uh, lung cancer, and then when he did the history with them, they were smokers. And then, and he was, uh, kind of uh, puzzled by that. And he decided to see what happened to a population where people don't smoke. And then he was looking for that population. And then someone told him, hey, you have to go to the West Coast. 
You go to Salt Lake City in Utah with the Mormons, they don't smoke. Or you go to Loma Linda University um, in California, they don't smoke. So he got his train. On that time, they, well, he would not uh, travel by carriage, but he went, he took a train. And then the first stop was Salt Lake City. He went to the train station. He left the place. There were so many people smoking. He turned around, went back to the train. That's not my place. He got to California. He stopped in Loma Linda. Went to the, went to the Loma Linda market. How many of you know Loma Linda market? Yeah, few of you. <laughs> Should go there more, more frequently. Well, I don't have anything to, uh, to, to deal with them. But um, they have good food there. And then he, he went there and he asked, can I buy a pack of cigarettes? And then the lady said, sir, if you want a pack of cigarettes, please turn around, get the train, go to Redlands. <laughs> and then he decided, well, that's the place that I want to be. And then he stayed in Loma Linda for a few months. And then um, he didn't find anybody that, that had lung cancer. So he returned to New York and had all the profile of his research and left with some Loma Linda doctors and told them, please call me if you find any lung cancer here. <laughs> okay, he passed a few months again. And then they called him in New York. Hey, we found a patient here with lung cancer. He is dead, but uh, um, he, he had lung cancer. Okay, give him more information. Well, he was a former smoker. Okay, well, more information. Well, he was living this, doing that, and then, and then he asked, how old was this guy when he died? 104. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Forget about that. <laughs> I don't want to even know about more about that. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, that's, that's, the, that's history. And then uh, he told us uh, this, this story there. And I, and, I, and I was thinking, how good is for us, how precious is for us to have science and truth together. Amen. This is what we need. This is what the world needs. Then, the truth will set you free. Education, education, education. With God as a teacher. We will find the truth to set you free. Free from what? Free from all these lies that we see around. See, all the evolution is telling, making, faking things to, to deceive people. Free from sin, from crime, from violence, from immorality, from death. To guide us through life, to take uh, the right decisions, to work for the right job, to do the right thing to help human beings. And then we have the difference between knowledge and wisdom. And then we know about this, uh, um, I used to say, uh, a nuclear engineering engineer could be a wise one and could be a very acknowledged one. The one that is wise is the one that used nuclear power to build, to build energy, to produce power. And the one that is not, that is just have the knowledge is the one that will make what? The atomic bombs to kill people and destroy it. So that's the difference. That's the difference. And I will, I will finish these words just to, to share with you my story uh, when I was working um, in the field of uh, health and showing that God will guide you. If you go with him, following his teachings, he is going to guide you toward the right direction, and, and especially for the graduates. I mean, put your work with the Lord, and he is, he is going to guide you wherever you go. Amen. And for the other guys that are here, um, if you are young 
and you still have the work ahead of you. Um, the same thing, God will guide you. And there is no end of education. I study in this world um, for 20, 26 years until I get to, to Loma Linda as a professor. So it's a lot of years. And, uh, but I never stopped it. I mean, last year I just got my certificate in health coach. So with um, 67 years old, so I'm getting old. So, But uh, there is no end. Education does not have an end. You always progress. You So uh, this is a message for the oldest here, the olders or the elders. I, mean, I should not say oldest, the elders. <laughs> and uh, that uh, we always... Uh, uh, we always learn, we always can continue learning. Uh, my group of the students in the doctoral in preventive care, one time I, I checked the age of these guys and the age of them was uh, 45 to 50 years old. I say, oh my goodness. Some guys are almost my age uh, and they are my students still. And that's, uh, that's education. Um, you never stop learning, and you should not stop learning. But um, when I finished my course in Loma Linda, I finished the Master in Public Health and Doctor in Public Health, and then I was trying to find a job, and I went to Hong Kong. And I worked in Hong Kong for six years. It was a good job, and uh, I was working as the director of the health promotion department that we changed the name to Lifestyle Management Department. And then uh, when we passed the six years, I should go back to the United States. Well, my situation was like that. I had a green card from the United States. My three kids have uh, US citizenship, and, um, but I didn't. And I was in Hong Kong with no perspective to, have, to get Chinese uh, citizenship. That, that was a little hard. And then Brazil was far away. I already disconnected with the country, with everything. And then I was a citizen of no country. <laughs> and then I said, well, I have to, uh, talking to my wife, of course, she wants to come back to, uh, to Southern California because our children were here and we have a house in Loma Linda. So that's the place that we want to go. And then we look for jobs in this area. It was not easy. And then I found a job in La Sierra. Praise the Lord. And uh, I interviewed with the director of um, the exercise science program. And then he liked me. And then I liked the, 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 the program. And this was for bachelors in science in exercise. And then uh, I accept the job. And then they say, OK. Now, if you accept, we need to do an interview now with the whole faculty, OK? And I wait for the interview. And I wait. And I wait. <laughs> My wife was so happy because now she could come to Southern California back and would be a commuting, but, uh, commuting, but uh, no problem, very close to Loma Linda. And then I decide to call the guy. And then he said, well, sorry. There was a guy that applied before you. And when he applied, uh, we approved him, and he gave up. And then you came. We approved him. You accepted. And then before we do the last interview, the other guy came back. <laughs> As we have approved the other guy, so we gave the job to him. And then I say, Lord, that's not fair. And sometimes we, we do those things to, to, to God. We complain. Oh, man, I have everything set up. It, it looks like it, this is what, what, uh, what I'm going to do. My wife is, was so happy. Back to the kids and far away from the humidity. Hong Kong was terrible. was uh, almost breathing uh, water. And then... Uh, and hot, and then uh, she, she was devastated. And then we kept praying, and then there was another option, going to Hawaii. The, um, the hospital medical um, 
Castle Medical Center was looking for a guy to do exactly what I did in Hong Kong, be the director of the health promotion department. So it's with me. But the wife was not happy. <laughs> That's humid and uh, far away from the children. Uh, it's the United States, but uh, uh, it's good for you to go there uh, as a tourist. <laughs> but to live there, I mean, the cost of life, the rental is all up. I don't want to go there. And then the directors there told me, OK, you have if you come here, we will pay for you to stay one week here in a hotel. Then you decide if you want to stay or not. I told my wife, well, if we go there to stay one week in a hotel, we have to go with our card, yes. It's not fair to go there. We only know Hawaii. We don't need to, to check the, the, the place. The job is the same. So we have to decide now if we want to go. And then she said, yeah, as we don't have any other option, let's go for it. So we decide to, to go to Hawaii. Kids were excited. Yeah, but uh, we, are, we were not very sure. And then uh, my prayer to the Lord was, Lord, if you have another plan for me, you let me know. And then I told the Lord, I'm going to buy my chickens on Monday. So before Monday, you give me a, a, a tip if I should. I'm not sure if we should do this type of prayer, but I did. <laughs> Anyways, if God does not have anything, I'm going to work for him. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's working in Adventist Hostel, so I was okay. But if there is something else that uh, probably would show up, then on Friday, I got an email from my former mentor in Loma Linda. And the email was saying that, Dr. Dos Santos, we are looking for a professor in the School of Public Health. Would you like to work here? <laughs> Praise the Lord. The rest is history. And this was in 2007, and I am there uh, since then. And, um, and, and my wife was so happy. And, uh, but uh, my point here is that if I have gone to La Sierra, I would be teaching bachelor's students. And it was a lower level for me. And, uh, and then they put me, um, I am teaching doctoral level. It's not even master's, it's doctoral level. And uh, it's much more challenging. And I was thinking, well, for me to get to this level, I need to do research and a little more research. And, and God was telling me, you don't need research now. The, 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 the job is yours right away. was much better than I was anticipating. And I, and I was not even dreaming about that. And I figured out that my mentor was looking for me almost one year. And I didn't know. <laughs> and she met me during some conventions in Loma Linda. And she was, hey, I need to talk to you. But I didn't. So, Working Loma Linda for me was far away. But God has a plan. And when you go with him, you go with certainty that you are going to fulfill your mission in this world. I will finish with the um, Bible verse in Proverbs um, 3, 21 to 26. Proverbs uh, 3, 21 to 26. My son... Do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. They will be life for you and an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will be then you'll go on your way to in safety, and your foot will not stumble. When you lay down, you will not be afraid. When you lay down, your your sleep will be sweet. So how many students are not sleeping well today? Huh? <laughs> how many of us are not sleeping well? Have no fear of sudden disaster or the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be at your side and will keep your foot from, bring, from being snared. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Amen.